Hi there, everybody. I'm meteorologist Greg D. In the details today, we're talking about the flash flooding that happened in Texas over the 4th of July holiday weekend. Why it happened and the timeline of watches and warnings that were issued by the National Weather Service for that area. To get started, we got to go all the way back to the last week of June. This is where a part of this begins. Tropical Storm Barry, a very weak, brief tropical storm in the southern Gulf made landfall in Mexico. Our models show that a little piece of this energy did head up towards the Texas Hill Country as we headed into the weekend. From the Pacific and upper low combined with that as well, and that really helped to enhance the rain coverage across the Hill Country. And this is what's key here. This this is Texas Hill Country. This is hilly terrain that has a very well defined dry and wet season. During the dry season, the Guadalupe River, which flooded over the weekend, looks like this. You see this satellite picture? There is no water. It is dry. It's called an arroyo. The way these rivers work is they only hold water when there is rain, and oftentimes they go from very little water in them to feet and feet in a matter of hours as rain falls somewhere in their basin. And the basin for this river is huge. The main river running from Hunt, where two tributaries of it, the South and the North Branch, come together all the way through Ingram down to Kerrville, where a lot of that damaging flooding happened. All these streams and creeks, these blue lines that spider into this river, they are all in valleys. These valleys funnel water down to the creeks and streams and they all focus down to the Guadalupe. In fact, they extend well north and south of the river, meaning a huge area of this part of the Texas Hill Country feeds eventually into this river. Any drop of water that falls over this area will eventually make its way towards the Guadalupe River and down to Kerrville and eventually a system of lakes as you head out towards Austin and San Antonio. And the rainfall here was tremendous. These are radar estimated rainfall totals in this area. It's unfortunate that the heaviest amounts fell very close to the Guadalupe River, a foot or more, in some cases 16, maybe 18 or 20 inches in just a matter of hours. That water funnels down hillsides into creeks and streams, which then feed into the Guadalupe, which heads towards Kerrville. That process can take several hours, and the National Weather Service has a system of gauges, river gauges, and rain gauges that can help predict when and if this is going to happen. In fact, the river gauge at Kerrville shows you how quickly this can go. July 4th, just after midnight, 145 in downtown Kerrville, the river at a height of 0.4 feet, basically a stream running through the town. By 745 in the morning, that level was 34 feet, an increase of over 30 feet in just a matter of hours, with most of that happening in just a couple of hours or so. Now, as I told you, the Weather Service knew this was going to happen because this river has done this before. In fact, all of the rivers in the Texas Hill Country here, known as Flash Flood Alley, they do this naturally. They have a season where they're dry, and then when it rains, they fill up and flood very, very easily. So the day before, Thursday, July the 3rd, as the Weather Service saw that flash flooding was going to be possible, they issued a flood watch for this area, actually saying that excessive runoff may result in flooding of rivers, creeks, streams, and other low-lying areas. Creeks and streams may rise out of their banks. Then as the rain began late on the 3rd and into the 4th of July holiday, the first warning came at 153. Remember, at 145, the river was still at 0.4 feet. So just a few minutes after that moment, the first flash flood warning is issued. Life-threatening flash flooding of creeks and streams, urban areas, highways, streets, and underpasses is likely. As the Weather Service watched the rain buckets fill with water, the rain gauges showing it was falling at inches per hour, another warning was issued. This one, stronger language, 335 in the morning. Flooding is occurring or is imminent. It is important to know where you are relative to streams, rivers, and creeks, which can become killers in heavy rains. Campers and hikers should avoid streams or creeks. In this area, 
the locals, the Weather Service office knows how this goes. This is not a surprise to them as these things have happened before. And finally, at 534, about two hours later, the most serious of the warnings, if you haven't gotten the previous, the flash flood emergency and the impact here is a particularly dangerous situation. Residents and campers should seek higher ground now. They wrote it in caps, just like I wrote it here. Life threatening flash flooding along the river is expected. This is a river that does this and has done this in the past. In fact, a similar event happened in July of 1987 that resulted in the deaths of 10 campers along the Guadalupe River at a children's camp, just like we saw over the weekend. A very sad situation in the Texas Hill Country.